This is the install video for our Glock Plus 6 extensions for the compact mags. I'm using one of our blend parts, which if you've ever bought any of our blend parts, a lot of times it's hard to see what exactly is a blem about it. We try to be picky as we can to uh, make sure you get a perfect part. I want to say the only blem I can see is probably just some discoloration around the screw holes. Other than that, I would, uh, I probably wouldn't have put this in the blem parts, but if you go on our website and check out our blem parts, you'll be happy to get some cheaper parts that might have just a uh, finished defect on them. So, our Glock magwells work with uh, these stock plates because of the Glock mags magwell being so much more open and the stock mag plates being tight to the mag itself, not designed to the shape of the frame. So unlike our most of our other extensions and stuff, um, or most of our other Mac wells, this one you can actually use these stock plates for. Um, to remove the stock plate, um, what you want to do is press down on that locking plate, and then you want to push in the sides and then pull the plate forward. It is very hard to do with, um, with a Glock tool. This one, I've only taken one other mag apart and I've already bent it. Um, so that is loose now, you can now pull it forward. But I picked this up on Amazon for, I wanna say 13 bucks and came with that tool. Uh, if you have a lot of these stock plates, I would recommend it as you can push down that locking plate. Again, push in the sides here as best you can and then pull that forward. This has one of our extra coil springs in it, so it has a lot more spring tension. But you'll see these notches here line up with the notches in the base plate. And that is why you want to push in the sides there to relieve that tension a little bit. This is the stock plus two that Glock sells. It is a little bit different and you won't be able to use this tool on it. But what you want to do is push down that plate and that plate is the full length here. So you want to push it in pretty far. Again, push in the sides here and then pull the plate forward. This also has one of our extra coil springs. So it has a lot more spring tension than uh, comes with the stock springs. Unfortunately, neither of those are the stock springs so I can't show you the um, why the stock springs are so much weaker, but they are much shorter, and uh, we provide one of our extra coil springs with our plus sixes because it is necessary to change them out for the extra length that this adds. So, setting those aside, no, one of them aside, and you'll, this is the Loctite that we offer on our website. Um, it is a blue medium grade Loctite. We do recommend using that because the, um, the screws are different than our older style where it was a back locking plate. There is nothing, no tension on the screws to keep them in place other than the Loctite because they are just there to um, prevent the mag from sliding forward. So you want to take the screws out Try not to drop everything. And apply a little bit of Loctite. You can see the size of that dot of Loctite that I added there. That is more than enough for these two screws. Turn to the left a little bit so you kind of feel it drop. And then turn to the right. If it gets resistance, turning to the left or turn to the right, then stop and turn to the left again. These small screws um, can get cross-threaded if you force them. 
so you want to make sure you are lined up properly in the hole so that they go down smooth. Once they are underneath the surface area there, you'll want to slide on the magazine. Now, once you add an extension, you can see that this mag spring is curved back slightly. Um, it's not bad, but that can happen. And when you disassemble with an extension on there, you want to be very careful that you do not bend that spring back. And so once it's on there, I'll show you the best way to remove it. But you want to hold that spring all the way down, line up your extension with those rails, start to slide it forward till it gets to those notches. And then you want to pinch in the sides as tight as you can and then slide that forward the rest of the way. You want to make sure you're holding the extension down because as you're pinching that in, it can try to jump the rail and then slide forward. And that's how you get those um, marks on the rails themselves as it's kind of wearing it. So now it's in place, it's held in nice and tight from those notches themselves. But now is when you would actually back those screws out in order to hold tight to the front. But before we do that, to disassemble, I would recommend grabbing a thin um, flathead screwdriver. Just grab a cheap one. This one is actually thicker than it needs to be. I want to get a smaller one and then put just a little notch into the blade there. This was probably a bigger notch than it needs to be as well. So I'm going to get a smaller one to make it a little bit easier to fit inside there. But what you want to do, pinch in those sides and then pull this back after putting those screws back under the surface. If they're not under the surface, it's not gonna work right, but get it back enough to where you can get your screwdriver in there. And you want to grab that spring there because all the spring now is down all the way into the bottom of this. And there's that whole distance there. The rails go all the way to the back of the mag, so it will pinch the spring and torque it over. So what you wanna do is grab that spring, and now push it back into the mag. And grab more of the spring. Continue to do that until the entire spring is inside the mag body and not the extension. And you want to have, you know, as little as possible sticking over the back. That's why a smaller screwdriver would be better, just so that it's easier to pop down into here and then have the bottom of the spring riding on the extension like it is there. Make sure that there's none left in there and then slowly, while pinching these still, slide it back. So it seems there's one more coil still left. Oop, and now they all popped back in. So it's a bit tricky but this will save your springs if you do have to do this. And so it feels like it's all in there. You can actually pinch here and then slide it back a little bit with your screwdriver. So it feels like that last little coil coming back around here is what's hanging up there. There we go, now I can see the tip so I pull this forward, I can see that tip under there. So now I think it is safe to slide back. Be careful because this spring has a lot of tension. It's gonna wanna hop forward on you. There you go. Now you can see the spring is still nice and straight where if we would just pull it off, it would probably have a kink and a bend that's going back pretty far. So again, do install. Push this all the way down, hold it down nicely, and then start sliding this forward. Get to that point, push in the sides so you can get over there easily, and then it pops into place. Now, take your wrench,
and start to back these screws out. Just enough to where it is up enough. There's a chip there. That silver is not what you're looking at. Look, there we go. Looking at the screw sticking up enough that it is holding on to the front of the magazine there. Hard to see, hopefully you can see this one a little bit better. But usually if it's just to the just under the surface, about four to five turns is all you need. You just want it sticking up about say a sixteenth of an inch or so. Just enough to capture that rail there. You don't gotta stick up much just so that there's no possible way that if it, if those knobs are worn down or if it hits and bumps it, that it can't actually come forward. And there you have it. That adds six rounds to your compact mag. This is the install video for the Glock 19 or compact magazine extension.